how to get your spark back. I want to talk about that on today's episode. So it's going to be a good one. Grab your coffee and let's get into it. You want coffee today? You want coffee today? Yeah, we're both Diet Coke. You coffee me, I know. I had coffee already. I'm you know, when I went to grab this Diet Coke and I thought, you know, I need to manifest Diet Coke as a sponsor on this show. Mm. I thought the same thing. Like, man, we show them a lot. Like, yo. Yeah. We promote them too much. I think I think we need to manifest Coke as a spot. Hey, you never know. You never know. You never know. Listen. They might like what they see. Like, Stranger oh. things have happened. Yes, they have. They have for sure. So um, you guys, before we get too far, welcome back to another show. Happy Friday. It's Friday for you guys. So TGIF. I will be on the road when you guys are watching this to the uh, Los Angeles Los Angeles. Los Angeles, LA, baby. You're going to get some vlogging out of you. Yeah, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to vlog a little bit. I, you know what? I struggle a little bit vlogging when I am in a social setting like that with other people. Yeah, of course. Because you want to be present. I do. I want to be present. So I, I'm going to find a mix, I hope, of getting footage, kind of like I did in San Diego. You know, I didn't over vlog, but I got enough footage to kind of put something together. So we'll see. Um, but I will I will try to do that. Uh, before we get too far, you guys, follow us on candidly underscore with coffee on Instagram. And give us a review on Spotify or Apple Podcast. I really do appreciate that. And if you're not already part of our inner circle, join as a member of our channel and become officially part of our inner circle where you get access to BTS, you get... Um, unfiltered, uncensored episodes of Off Topic, which we are currently on set of Off Topic because our new studio is um, under construction. So, but you can join as a member, you get a badge next to your name, you get access to special emojis, and but most importantly, you get all the the good content from us. All the juice. All the off the cuff, crazy, random. Yeah. We, we travel to the space and back on that show. And then some. We we talk about we so many different things. <laughs> Cannot follow it at all. It's crazy. No. Um, all right, you guys. I have to say, I have to speak on body boot camp for a minute. I know you guys are probably tired of hearing about it, but why is it that the minute registration closes, everyone comes out of the woodworks like, oh, is it too late? Is your, you know, I went to the website, registration's closed. When's the next one? literally at least a dozen between DMs, comments, at least a dozen people have asked about body boot camp after registration closed. Well, it's always like that. It's people, always like that. You know, we love pushing it to last yeah. absolute minute. Yeah. And I actually, I reached, I exceeded capacity by a, a dozen people and I let a few people trickle in, but um, you guys got to get on the wait list. You got to get on the wait list and you have to register when I send out these emails, register, lock in your spot, because then you're going to get access to the demo. You're going to get access to all the videos so you can be fully prepared. You will know how to use the app. You'll have two weeks to play before the challenge starts, basically two free weeks. So get on the list for the next one so you don't miss it and register right away so that you can play for free literally for two full weeks. So basically you get 10 weeks for the price of eight. So get on it, go to my website. I'll link it up here on the screen as well. Um, BBC 15 is the next one. It's coming in November. And uh, you will definitely want to be in that one. And um, you'll have to register to find out why, but it's going to be very important part. Uh, it's going to be very important. And the people that are in BBC 15 will be glad they're in BBC 15. I was for, about to say, yep. For a very specific reason that I'm not going to share yet. Yes. But um, all right, well, it's official. Don't you feel like it's not really fall quite yet? Yes, it is. But feel it, it feels like fall. No, the mornings are cold. The evening's starting to get what cold. What the heck? Just like that. Boom, gone. But like, you know what? We're going to have a new summer watch because I already looked at the weather and this weekend here is going to be in the 80s again. I know, but I can feel With the air the in the morning. Different. The, the dew. The, the, you know, Mountain Dew like the dream, but it's dew. Like, you know, like the, uh, it's been cloudy. You know what I'm saying? Like overcasty in the morning. Just keeping it cold. No sun. Barely came out today at like 12, the sun, or 11, I'm sorry, late. Yeah, I know. I can feel it. I can literally feel 
the air. I almost smell fall in the air. Yeah. I mean, obviously I smell my pumpkin candles and the, and the, uh, the broom from Trader Joe's. Broom. <laughs> as soon as I smell that thing, I know it's fall. It just like all things fall. I love fall though. Fall is my, I think fall is my favorite. I'd have to say. Fall is nice. <clears throat> used to be some, spring and summer, but fall is nice because it's crispy, it's chill, but it's still the sun's out. And the heat's not beating down on you. Yeah, it's cozy. I like yeah. Halloween. I like spooky. I like, you know, horror movies. Reminds me of my mom. Yeah. And so I just, I think it's it's a lot of positive feelings around Halloween. She loved this time of year too. Like she loved spooky. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which, it's her birthday today. When we're recording this, it's her birthday. I know. I was going to say happy birthday yeah. to your mother. Yeah, it is her birthday. She would have been 78. 78. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. So crazy to think. It feels like it's been, I blinked my eyes and she's gone, but it also feels like it's been years and years and years at the same time. Yeah. Kind of weird, right? Does, how does it feel about your mom? Been forever because it's been, it's been a long a decade. Time. I lost Crazy. my mother. What were we, what were we at? Was coming up on her tenure, mm -hmm. right around the corner. I think in October. Sometime. Do you make it a point to keep her memory alive in your in your brain? Yes. You know what I mean. I try to think about her so I don't forget about her. Yeah, I do that too. I do that with the dogs. I do that with the dogs I've lost. All of them: Barkley, Lola, Karma, Diesel. I I like to stop and think because I feel like I want to make sure that it's a it's imprinted there. It doesn't fade. I don't want it to fade. I think yeah. that's how you keep people's memories alive. You keep their spirit alive by keeping their memories alive. Yes. You know what yeah, I mean? I look at pictures and stuff. Yeah, I like to do that. I look at the inside of my arm sometimes. That's diesel tattooed on me. Yeah. I'm and I get it touched up. And I have, I was thinking about that. Like you have diesel and I have karma. I have, I have her name, karma on my ribs. Yeah. We both have, uh, we've both memorialized them, but it's just crazy. I think it's important to keep the memory alive of loved ones by taking some time. A lot of times when you first lo lose them, it's too painful. Yeah. And it takes time to, it takes time to be able to do that because it's so painful at first, but then it becomes less painful, but then in those moments, it brings, it makes it more painful when you're, when you're looking at the pictures, but it's a little more tolerable. Yeah. It subsides. Yeah. It's just tolerable. The initial wave is the worst. The waves. The shock. Yeah. The initial waves. Ugh. Ugh. Awful. All right, you guys, let's take a little break for one up nutrition and we'll be right back. It is no secret to you guys by now how much I love my One Up Nutrition supplements. They are a part of my daily routine from the Daily Cleanse and the Gut Health Plus that help keep my digestion on point to their protein powders that I incorporate into so many different recipes. The ISO protein is very easy to digest and only 110 calories per scoop. The whey protein is delicious. The flavors are so good and always have little extra crunchy cookie pieces in them that just take the flavor to the next level. Their powders like the Pure Rebuild and the Pre-Workout are a staple in my daily workout routine. Their flavors are amazing. I'm alcohol-free these days, but I swear when I drink some of these flavors from 1UP, I actually feel like I'm having a delicious mocktail. Their products are third-party tested, so you know what you're getting. They're made in the USA. If you use code Janine at checkout for a discount, that's J-E-A-N-I-N-E. Brookies are back, you guys. Brookies are back from 1UP Nutrition. I used to have one of those every day. It was my addiction for a while. They are the brownie chocolate chip cookie bars. I personally like mine chilled, but they also taste good warmed up with a little bit of drizzle of caramel on top of like a protein ice cream as well, like a delicious treat. But they're back in stock. You guys should check them out. I have a box right now. I might so do good. that on Saturday. It just gave me an idea. Yeah. Let me think about that. Yeah. So do your do your ice cream yes. and then warm up a brookie and then also yeah. warm up some caramel, drizzle it over. So Ooh. you'll have a protein packed because the brookie has 17 grams of protein or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And then your ice cream will have like, what, 40 you're going to protein pack treat. Oh, Delicious. Man. Yeah. That's the hack. Look at that. That is the I'm hack. I'm telling you guys, we give you guys the hacks, how to like enjoy this stuff and then I not do. feel like 
oh my God, Coach Janine, I ate all these calories and sugar. No, it's not going to spike your insulin. Yeah. It's going to feel good. And you know what I just did for you? It's a, it's a mind hack that I share with my clients all the time and they love it. And I say, create the crave. Create the crave for something that's not super indulgent. So like right now I created a crave for you. I put it in your brain. True, you did. Now you're desiring it and that will be very satisfying when you have it, but it still is macro friendly. I'm for sure going to have it, 100%. I'm going to film it and all. Like, watch this, you guys. Look at this hack. (laughs) You guys, guess what's coming back? And I'm I'm beyond excited. You guys know I love nostalgia. And it is confirmed Goonies is coming back with the entire cast is coming back from Goonies. Get out of here. The main cast is all coming back. Yes. Yes, it is. They're still around. Yeah. They're all alive. All of them. Mm Mm-hmm. How... The universe blessed them. Good, good, good for them. No, I'm saying it's not, you know not around crazy? from our childhood. A lot of people are gone. Goonies holds. Like Goonies still, like if you watch it today, it is still entertaining. It is still very good. It's funny. I love it. Junk. I, it's like an adventure. Yeah. Goonies is like a quintessential, like the things that you think about, like it, that you do with your friends at summer in the 80s was create adventures. Yes. That was like a quintessential creating an adventure with your friend. Oh, like the best. We used to play Goonies. So my friends and I. The video we, game? No. <laughs> I played the video game. Well, not, well, let me finish a thought. We used to play Goonies. We would go. She had a creek near her house oh. and we would go climb down. It was deep down and there was trees and we looked like we're in the middle of nowhere. And we would go out and go on a Goonies adventure like. When we were like, in, I think we were like sixth grade or something. It was fun. You're lucky. I grew up in the city. We didn't have creeks. That sounds so, I lo- I'm adventurous. I love creeks I, yeah. and woods. and Yeah, I loved adventures. Kind of mm-hmm. I loved adventures. Yes. I loved like, I remember like playing like that. I played when I was young. I had, a, I had a vivid imagination too when I was young. I used to play different things like with my imagination or by myself, you know, all by myself. I would play. Good times, good times. All right, you guys, let's take a little break for Transcend and we'll be right back. When's the last time you switched your budget around? If you're spending cash on eating out and buying clothes, but you don't want to spend a bit on your health, what are you even doing? Every day from the moment you wake up until you go to bed, you have a series of choices that will make or break you. The things you eat, your physical activity or lack thereof, your sleep, it all adds up. Personally, I care about what I put in my body and I found that it's hard to put a price on feeling like you're ready to take on the world every day. That's why I leverage the power of hormone optimization and fully customized peptide protocols from Transcend. If you're ready to take your health to the next level, head over to the link transcendcompany.com forward slash esco elite and fill out an intake form today. There's still a few days left for the 25% off GLP-1s sale from Transcend. This is a great opportunity to talk to Transcend to find out if GLP-1s are right for you. There's lots of different ways they are administering GLP-1s now, not just like a crazy dosage that's going to give you all the side effects. They're doing some microdosing for people that, you know, just need to take the edge off their appetite or just need a little help with weight loss. So there's lots of... um, different ways. So you should book a consult with Transcend. Use our link and uh, transcendcompany.com forward slash ESCO elite. So they know we sent you book a consult, talk with the wellness specialist, see if they're right for you. I, I will say I've heard now that a lot of people are enjoying terzepatide over like Ozempic and some of the other ones because it has an additional component that alleviates one of the biggest side effects of GLP ones, which is nausea. Oh yeah. And nobody, let's be honest, nobody wants to feel nauseous. That's I a hate, shitty feeling. No, no nothing is worth. <clears throat> no. Nothing is worth. You can't operate. No. You feel terrible. You no. don't feel like yourself. What are you going to do when you're nauseous? You just want to like crawl in bed and like not do nothing. It's a horrible feeling. I cannot function when I'm nauseous. Because there are certain fat burners that are really strong. Like I've talked about it before, like the Yohimbine yeah. thing. And that makes me nauseous. It's very effective. It, it does curb my appetite. But it makes me nauseous and then it wires me up too much and it's not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it. So, yeah. Anyways, you guys check it out before. I think that sale is is coming to an end very shortly. So definitely check it out sooner than later if you're interested. All right, you guys. 
Moving on to Comment Corner, the first one comes to us from Jillian McCoy, talking about OBGYN prescribing anxiety meds instead of dealing with hormones. This happened to me. Finally seeing a hormone specialist after watching Janine for months now and getting hormones in check and weaned myself, don't recommend, off the anxiety meds and feeling good. Like we talked about, this was a comment on how people, old school doctors are so quick to literally prescribe a plethora of medications, but anti-HRT. Quick. Yeah. They just, here you go. Yeah. Not knowing like, maybe this might damage the person even right. worse. You don't know their mental health, where their mental state is. You don't do no evaluation. Right. You don't vet them first. Like that, that's, that should be a protocol to do that. Just don't hand shit out. <laughs> All right, the next one, Natalie Chrisman. She says, so true. What I did in my 20s and 30s who dropped body fat and weight absolutely did not work in my 40s. Damn perimenopause. (laughs) I just started HRT, estrogen patch, and progesterone, and most likely testosterone as well. Of course, I would love to be as lean as I was before these changes, but right now hormonal balance is my priority and hopefully the rest will fall into place. I will have to say the rest will fall into place if you want it to. If you wanted to. Yeah, you can absolutely be as lean as you were in your 40s if you want to, if if that is something you desire. You know, I was recently having a conversation with a client. You mean she's in her 40s, she could be as lean as in her 20s and 30s. That's, she, that's what it was, right? The comment? Yeah, oh yeah, sorry. You yes, heard? but it, it, as lean as yes. you want to. As I lean had, as you want to, no limits. I was talking to uh, one of my clients and she was like, what do you think is feasible for me or realistic? I was like, it's not about what's realistic. What's realistic, throw that out the door. It's what do you want? Yeah. Because you can have whatever you want. That's true. People put these limits. Yeah. And they use age behind these limits. Mm -hmm. Like when society like puts these limits and Mm -hmm. then people put in their head like, Mm -hmm. furthest from the truth, I'm better now at this age and you are too than you were probably in your 20s and 30s. Yeah, because the first stage of really being able to achieve somewhere you've not gone before you have to first believe that it's possible because if yep. you don't believe it's possible, you'll you'll give up or you'll put up every roadblock or you'll believe your own BS and and you'll give up. So you have to really just take that out of your head that you have limits. You don't have limits. None. There's no limits. It's all in your head. Yeah. Those are imaginary. Imaginary. Things you made up. Mm-hmm. Mental blocks. Mm-hmm. It, it, they it, really, it really is. It really is. Um, next one, Marion... Limos, 6408. I really enjoy your content. I'm sad I missed your sign up for boot camp. I'm on the wait list and can't wait to start. My daughter's getting married in April and I've been on a health journey, but menopause has got me bad. I had a hysterectomy last year, gained 12 pounds since then. I've been going to the gym, weightlifting with machines, get 10K or more five days a week of steps. I've tried doing macros and using my fitness pal and struggle with reaching protein. Hopefully with your help, I can see results and feel good. You are the absolute perfect candidate for my program. Whether it's one-on-one coaching, if you don't want to wait until the next boot camp, which is going to be in November, um, one-on-one coaching or the boot camp, I can definitely help you because I love when people like, they're kind of doing all the right things, but it's still not yielding results because it just means I got to kind of look at what they're doing and tweak a couple things. That's it. Like she already said it right there, I'm not getting enough protein. Yeah. So we have hacks for that, or you have hacks. Yeah. Yeah, but it, and sometimes it's just even beyond that. There's other there's other things that are just not quite yeah, right. Something's missing. The structuring in the meals or or something. And and I love that. That is like my my passion. When somebody like plugs into the matrix and I get to look at what they're doing, and go, oh, that's what it you is. You like to decipher the code. Yes. I love it. It's, you nerd out almost. I do. It, you know how like in my in my technical stuff, like I love technology, I treat this kind of like technology too. It's like cracking the code yeah. of individual people. That's why we call it like the blueprint. The blueprint. And, and again, math is the math. Um, I came across this quote and I wanted to share it. It is from Trisha Posner. And it says, our mothers were largely silent about what happened to them as they passed through this midlife change. But a new generation of women has already started to break the wall of silence. I love that. Interesting. That is a good quote. I feel like I am that generation. I'm I'm that first generation, for sure, in my family, to break that wall. 
because when I think back, my aunts, my mom, who know, you know, they were they all just looked like miserable all the time in in their midlife, and it was menopause and and, and midlife ex- stuff. And they accepted it. They didn't know any better. They didn't know any better. They weren't told any better. They weren't. They were sent out to pasture, like we've talked about before, right? They were sent out to pasture because they they had their babies. Now it doesn't matter. No, that's right. Doesn't matter. You're good. Just you know, just shut up and get old. Do and, your and thing be there, and that's that, and that's accept who you are. You're supposed to age gracefully. Yeah, they no. actually kind of even had that mindset, didn't you? <laughs> did you have someone that you know that the woman she stopped wanting to have sex with her husband because she said, "Well, I, I'm not. That's for babies, and I'm done. So do your thing." And she kind of let him have affairs. I didn't know him. I, I heard about this dude. Yeah, you um, know of uh, him. Yeah, I know of him. Because she thought that was She's her older. clear purpose, and she thought, well, uh, you know, it's done for me. He wasn't done. He I'm was out like, to pasture. You know, uh-uh. I'm still here to do my thing. <laughs> you ain't going to give me something. I'm going to go get it somewhere else. <laughs> All right, you guys. <laughs> let's take a little break for Mega Fit Meals, and we'll be right back. Life is busy, and when I get busy and don't have time to meal prep, I reach into my freezer and grab a Mega Fit Meals. Mega Fit Meals are a macro-friendly meal prep, no subscription required, real quality ingredients. They switch up the menu. You guys, I love them. They're chicken tenders, the margarita pizza, the chicken quesadillas. I mean, this food sounds indulgent, but guess what? It fits right into your macros. Head over to their website, and don't you forget to use code J-E-A-N-I-N-E. That's code Janine for a discount. What's your favorite make a fit meal right now? Oof. I got to say the bison sliders. Yeah, I see they eat that one a lot. I love the quesadilla too, though. Yeah. That's another one. I'm kind of hooked on their pizza. I have a little pizza addiction. You're not no kind of. You are. <laughs> you no kind of my ass. It's like me. I love their sliders. I get it every time. I get fixated on food food items ran like if i make something and i like it i will it's scary because i'll want to eat it every day for like a month my new kind of fixation is my mediterranean pizza that was in my vlog that you guys just saw on tuesday if you watch my vlogs but i just decided to make a mediterranean style pizza with my all my little what i usually make a bowl or a wrap i decided to make a pizza slice it was delicious it looked good i saw it oh so good it was so good and it was a little lower on the protein but you adjust and make up for it. As long as you're hitting your protein goal and you're getting some protein, you 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 know you make it work. Like me, every day I'm always eating pancakes. Every day, you're addicted to pancakes. I am. I That's, love those. You like camp out in the kitchen for like a million years and make those <laughs> damn pancakes. Yep. <laughs> make those damn pancakes every day. Every day. Oh my goodness! All right, you guys, let's talk about getting your spark back because listen, wait on this show. We talk a lot right now, especially about midlife, menopause, all those things. And one of the things that I feel like what happens to women in that are going through all of this stuff is they literally like their lights out. Like I feel like they lost their passion, desire, their 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 joy of living. Like they don't know where to get joy anymore. That's a lot of people. Right? Because maybe yeah. before they got joy from their children, they got joy from, you know, their job, maybe now they're retired, they got joy from their coworkers, their spouse maybe, and all of those things now, you know, their sparks out, like they don't even know, and they don't have the kids to take care of anymore, so what happens is, do they have any hobbies, you know, just like, it's hard, you have to kind of stop and think, I know I've had those thoughts, like, what do I enjoy doing, like, what do I like to do? Sometimes yeah. I don't know because honestly- I know you said that to me, like you got your thing with the cars yeah. and the guys and the uh-huh. camaraderie with them and uh-huh. all that. So I don't, I don't, I do need to maybe rediscover something. Although I have to say right now I am immersed in my job, like I immersed in my job. You're super immersed. So I kind of, I do get joy from my job luckily because otherwise it would be a problem. I, I, I really love what I do. I love this. This is kind of a hobby. I love our- off topic, but you know, I'm talking about like the 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 typical woman out there, her kit empty nester, you know, midlife and lost that spark. I want to talk about like what can you do to get it back. I mean, you definitely can. It's it's possible. You know, you just have to make some lifestyle adjustments, and you have to 
try to get your spark back. You, it's not going to come back on its own. No. You have to focus on it. You have to stop and think, like, what is going to help? I actually like the thought of prioritizing self-care. So I really started to think about, like, what what do I feel like that? Like, what brings me true joy? Like, nighttime routine, like a good nighttime routine. Like, taking care of yourself at night, taking a hot shower, lighting a candle, like, doing full body care, like like exfoliate, moisturize, your skincare routine. Like, is your bed comfortable? Like, is your room your sanctuary? Like, like you, that's part of getting your spark back. I think like, is your room comfortable? Do you love at the end of the day to just go lie down? Your, your sheets are the softest, most comfortable. The room is the right temperature. You know, it smells good. Yeah. Like, I think that helps. Like having like, a good nighttime routine, like take a eucalyptus shower. You know, those are kind of things. Those bring me joy. You know, at least one throw, time throw per week. Throw some good music on. Yeah. At least once a week. Yeah. I think that at least once a week, you deserve like a full night ritual, like spa experience at home. I really, I really do think that'll help. It, you'll just feel giddy and all by yourself too, just like by Cheers. yourself. Just the joy in that comfort. Obviously, optimizing your diet for sure is is something that's important. And I'm not even talking about the traditional. Right now, I'm not talking about macros or that. I'm talking about like what I talked about in the last episode of this podcast is paying attention to how you have changed, how your digestion has changed, how your hunger has changed and like optim reinventing the way you eat, the way you create meals, the things that you eat, like paying attention to the details of your meals, making eating an experience too. Like really taking the- pride in what you make. Yeah. Like I do, I take pride. I'm yeah. sure people can see it on my Instagram. I'm like, look, I'm enjoying what I, right. what I eat. I love what I eat. You're not just eating to eat. No. Right, like, cause so many. Yeah, yeah. I think people put things together and eating because they're hungry just to eat. But like, oh, look what I created. Well, like, especially because moms are busy, right? They're super busy. Yeah. And you know, but I think that if you, if you take time, especially if you have maybe more time, maybe the kids are out, the kids are gone now. Maybe you do have more time for things like that. Now it's time to like take some pride in your meals. Maybe even like we're talking about getting your spark back. Maybe even a cooking class. Or something like that, like a course or something to, to where you can learn more about that, but like nourishing your body, like making that maybe a hobby if it's something that you might want to enjoy. But so when I talk about optimize your diet, I really just think like, think about how you're eating. How can you reinvent it and get excited about your food? You know, are you nourishing your body? Is it, are you um, having fiber and things like that? But also like, do you love your food? That's the most important. Yeah. Don't just eat something because you whipped it together and then you're like, uh, yeah, I guess this is healthy for me, so I'm just going to eat this. Yeah. No, I yeah, love it. I see that Enjoy a lot. It. And I know. I, know, I know I talk about it at, mm -hmm. at nauseum, but it's one of the biggest critiques I have, like working with so many clients that I see is is people need to put more focus into- It's boring. Their food. It's not even boring. It's just not right. Yeah. It's just not, it's not, it's not doing it. It's not going to help you get your spark back because that's a big part. Your food is your fuel, like yeah. for how you perform in life, your men mental state, your physical state, energy, everything. If you put more focus into it, your output is gonna be better. You're gonna feel better. You're gonna feel a lot better. Way better. Another thing is to stay social and active that, you know, this is definitely my downfall. I'm not the best about staying social. But I do, like, because one of those suggestions I read was join, like, a group fitness class. Not even so much for the exercise necessarily, but for that social component. Community. Good music. You're always going to get good music. A an accountability date. A time out of the house that's going to force you out, you know, and then create some social vibe around that. I do have that. That's why I go to Orange Theory on Saturday mornings. Yeah. It's kind of like... It's a no brainer. We, we the answer is we're we're always going to go unless we say no. So it's not the opposite. We don't have to schedule it. We only have to cancel it. 
It is just set in stone. Smart. Because, and that helps. It's like, a, it's at least once a week where I get out of the house. And you know what? I'll have to say, when I was going through the really hard time after my mom died and taking care of my dad, that that little social time helped me. It did, for sure. Yeah, so, that's a good advice. Yeah, like a mm. fitness class or, or something. Or even an online group, Facebook group of some sort, some lady, somebody, talk to somebody. It feels good when you're conversing with people. That, that get it. Yes. Because let me tell you. That get it. They've you been through some shit like suddenly you when you're in it there, you know, we're just tribal. Like you, you said that a lot. We're oh, tribal yeah. as humans. So very tribal. it is just so comforting when you can find people that are, that can relate to what you're going through. Yep. And I'm telling you, like as a woman, a postmenopausal midlife woman, empty nester, you see it when you're out at target or whatever, you can spot the other people who are like, you see it in their face that, like you too, yeah, me too. <laughs> you yeah. just see it. That's true. But you, they, we're tribal, so we tend to like. I think our energies kind of connect. You end up kind of connecting with other people. I just that. said that on the podcast yesterday, because the person I had that podcast, I you had a podcast. Oh, uh, no, sorry, live. Oh. Let me correct myself. My IG live. I I just met her a few days ago. From, she was jumped on my life through a friend of hers she knew, and and I say this about people it's like. This is just a vessel we're in. It's our energies. We connect somehow. Some way, somehow, our energies pull us together in a weird way. And that's what you need. You connect with people. Yeah. Connect with your animals. You connect with your, your partner who you're with. You connect with the person you spend the rest of your life with. You connect. It's energy. It's a lot of it's energy. I agree completely. I agree. Um, addressing hormonal imbalance, obviously. Like, I, I'm going to just shout this to the rooftops because... At, for for whatever reason, it's still a lot of people think, oh no, but I'm not willing to do that because they're, they're so scared because Taboo. of this like women's initiative health study that happened in the 90s. Listen, unless you specifically have reason to not because of your own health, you know, condition or whatever, I really advise exploring getting your hormones in balance because there are so many things that your hormones it like estrogen specifically impacts on the way you feel and the way you just everything that it's life-changing it is literally life-changing it is at least worth a a like consultation like we talked about you know with transcend but 100 percent. it's just still i'm just so grateful for my hrt yeah, i don't understand even even amongst men like why do you want to feel terrible why do you want to have low libido, no, low energy? You know you feel like shit. You know you need help. Kick your ego to the pride and get some help. Step it up. Yeah, because I know it's because it's not ego. With women, it's no, I fear. With men. Oh, with with women, it's fear. I'm talking about women. With it's fear. They're they're afraid because they're you know there's been a lot of like oh people have fear that cancer. Or cancer. Mm hmm. Yeah. So unless you you've been specifically told, unless you have a specific risk factor. You know, there's also a lot of there's also a lot of ways in which HRT decreases the risk of cancer. A lot of stuff is coming out about yes. that, mm -hmm. decreasing the risk of cancer. So, um, also, you know, something to keep in mind for sure. Another one, very very important thing: people do not take enough time to figure out ways to de-stress. Got to de-stress your life. No, they don't. <clears throat> they just accept it. I'm just so stressed and this is just this and this mm -hmm. is just that. And you're willing into that, mm -hmm. your conscience. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what? I am stressed, but I'm going to go do some anti-stress. I'm going to go work out or I'm going to go to a sweat lodge. I'm going to do something. something. Go for a walk, but you got to do something. Yeah. Go read a book, get your mind out of things, stay off of social media. Maybe that's bothering you, mm -hmm. triggering A lot of people get triggered by social media. They don't mm -hmm. realize that they're subconscious. 100%. Triggered. Bad. You don't even know why it's triggering you. No, something. But it's triggering you. It's some a memory, a suppressed memory, yes. like something that, a, a deep insecurity. But if you feel triggered and the desire to leave comments, crazy comments on someone's- right. You know what I've what I've heard about that specifically? Yeah. Is, what's the, what's the, yeah, what's the psychology behind that? Is there is some sort of a, an addiction to the drama because people get literal like adrenaline rush when they're debating with someone or when they leave a troll comment 
it's like an adrenaline rush and you know, the way adrenaline is processed in the body, it also sometimes tr it triggers like a dopamine response too. Yeah. And you become addicted to the drama. Yeah. It's kind of like relationships that are that real volatile. Yes. It's not like a, the same. I know what you mean. It's not the same as like a chemical dependency, but it becomes an addic a habitual addiction and you do get addicted to the chemicals that are released in your brain. The from the chaos. From the chaos. Yes. Yeah. Because you're right. Because I love chaos, but not that kind of chaos. I love chaos like the, how I grew up on the streets, like that kind of chaos. Yeah, but I think, and when you think, if you dig deeper into those kinds of feelings, yeah, what, why is it that you love that? Usually there's something that you can pinpoint back to childhood. Yeah. Those right. kind of things, I know it sounds like, Oh, hoity toity, and this is a lot of the talk. I'm no therapist or expert by any means, but a lot of those things are speak, it's like your inner child speaking, and yeah. that it takes you back. I know a lot of the things that that trigger responses in me. Like, you know, I I'm sure people can even pick up on it on this show, but I'm very like, I love nostalgia. It's because the eighties and nostalgia, it brings, it takes me back to like my inner child spending time with my mom. And it has to do with, I associate eighties movies, like the Goonies and scary movies in the fall. Now I associate those things with being a little girl, spending time with my mom. And so that's why it's such a, it's comforting. So it see how it, it's almost like a lot of the things that we feel now as adults, it's, you can pinpoint that there's something attached to your childhood. And a lot of times, sadly, it's a negative thing. It's child traumas True. of some sort. You're so right. But you get, and then you begin, you have an addiction and you wanna drum up that same feeling, but you don't really know where it comes from. That's why a lot of people work through that kind of stuff in therapy. Like what is, when it's a negative thing. Like adrenaline junkies. Yeah. They're like addicted to the feeling and the chemicals that the body releases. So adrenaline, is fight or flight, right? Yes. But then they they kind of connect that with a dopamine response too, because then dopamine is feel good. So you get fight or flight and then come feel good chemicals. And they get a, they get addicted to that combination. Interesting. So what do you think yours is? Because you, you are kind of like an adrenaline junkie. Yeah. What is mine? Like my chaos? Yeah, you are addicted to chaos, and what kind of chaos are you addicted not, to? Not, not so much. I'm saying when I was younger, growing up in the streets, like I love, like we called it thugging, like funking, like what's up? Let's go, let's go, let's go fight. Let's go pick some dudes to fight. Let's go see what's up. You know, stupid shit like that. We always got into trouble. Mm -hmm. We was always ready to go to, you know, to battle with somebody. You know what I mean? Do you kind of still feel like sometimes you have that that, that trigger? Like yes, you, I just was you, talking to my boy about that. Yeah, I do it's a, it's a it's a constant fight. Where that inner child or beast mm -hmm, or that, see? that rage and maniac that's inside of me, like yeah, I almost, almost in a, I'm not looking for, but almost in a way where I'm like, I, I hope someone tries me, but then the the the, the rational side is like, no, I don't think that way. Right, it's a constant fight. Yeah, interesting. It's 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 hard. It's hard to explain. I know a lot of people don't understand that, but it's that fighter inside of me that that he 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 can come out quick. I kind of think that's so why I fight that guy. I kind of think that's you've why seen, you've seen it many times. <laughs> Can I say this one more time? I kind of think that's why you uh, were addicted to the cold showers. Mm. It's the same chemicals that you're bringing up. It's adrenaline, then yeah. dopamine. Yes, you become addicted to that. It kind of brought you back to that. Yeah, wired up, fired up. You would you loved being that like, let's go. Yeah, you know. That? True, I do. Yeah, I like being so fired crazy. up. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take much to fire me up. I don't like the adrenaline feeling. See, I'm the kind of, I'm the opposite. I do not like that fight or flight response. I, it triggers me in the, in, it makes me like want to like bring it down. I feel it. When you become super in tune with, you create like this good baseline of living such a clean health, healthy lifestyle, especially without alcohol and drugs, anything like that. I literally am so connected with the way I respond to different stimuli. I'm, I'm connected with what causes me stress, a cortisol response, with what triggers like adrenaline. 
And so I know what I don't want to feel like and I avoid those situations like, nope, can't do that because it, it triggers the adrenaline and I, I don't like that feeling, that fight or flight. I'm like, nope. So you become so in tune. I think that's part, you know, it's important to get to know yourself that well because then you know what to avoid, what to, what works for you, what content to consume. Yep. You know, it's creating, you're creating a better mental state. Um, you know, I know we kind of got off topic here a little bit, but no. it, it is part of, you know, creating like a good, clean, stable mental state where you're really in tune with the things that you're, that make you happy and the things that make you not happy and avoid the things that make you not happy and do more of what makes you happy. It's kind of simple, but it's really not for a lot of people. More people need to take this advice on social media. Like, mm -hmm. listen, if there's certain individuals that trigger you because they talk a certain way, they're not talking to you directly. Well, why is it triggering you? Why do you feel comfortable? Com they come on, hold on. They come on like you're talking to them directly and they get all mad and have to comment and say something back. Like, if you don't like that person's content or what the message is saying, why the mm -hmm. fuck do you even follow them? Why watch it? It's weird, weird, man. You should just move on. You know what I'm saying for me? Because I just told you, I did a little bit of research on it and it is because they are addicted. It, it, they like it. People, Some people are addicted to that adrenaline response and they get adrenaline yeah. when they're going at somebody. It, it feeds their soul. They like it. They, they're, they're addicted to the chaos of the drama. And yeah. that's why they do it. And it's actually social media has made it worse. Way worse. Because you have to think about it. Before that, there was no outlet no. for that kind of thing. So now people are so exposed to it. The more you do it, you become desensitized, right? So if they like it, if they like it and they're addicted to it, they want to do it more and more and more. And they elevate, right? They get worse and worse and nastier and nastier because they're desensitized and so they have to do something more extreme. Then they have to put out their own crazy videos and do more drama because they're so it's so easy to do now. But think about it like 30 years ago. What did people do? What did people do to get that same feeling? They'd have to go off on someone at the check stand or go off on someone road rage, but they'd have to do it in person. Yeah. I mean, they still do, but not as not as not as much. I guess you could no, say. it's more now because there's access, right? When bull, when um, it used to be message boards before social media. Message boards came out, like E Network had a message board, Bravo had a message board, so people would be able to go on and make commentary on people's blogs and message message boards, and it, they used to get so nasty. That was the first trolls was was on message boards. I know it's crazy that people create. Fake troll accounts just to do that because they get off on it. They're, it's a they're, drug. They're weirdos. It's like an it's like an addiction. Yeah, sad. What, people. what they should they're do sad, lost people is try to get their spark back in a positive way. But yeah. it, exploring hobbies, I do feel like it's important to have something that's yours, that's a hobby that you truly enjoy doing. You know, so like a fitness class, a local group or a club, like walking clubs. Yeah. Like where, where yeah. people get together. You know that one of my one of my BBC people is putting together a walking club for everybody in the area to meet up in that's in BBC. It's really? the Bay Area BBC oh, walking a, club. Oh, there's a Bay Area group? Yeah, I just read it in the group. I wonder she where just put at. it together. I wonder where that and how far I might show up. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, they're gonna get get together and walk. And I thought that's so cool, right? Yeah. But the, it's exactly because it's we're tribal. We want tribal. that sense of community. And, and you want to be able to, like, open up to people. You want whatever shit you're holding on to inside, you want to let it out. to release. Out. Yes, you got to release mm -hmm. it. I, again, the last two people I had on the podcast, I mean, uh, IG Live, let me correct myself. <laughs> they had to release what they had, were dealing with. You know, like, let it go. Don't yeah. hold back. Yeah, because then you release it and it's gone. It's not tucked away somewhere, manifesting its way in other ways. But some other things like, you know, I used to make fun of when I was younger and I'm like, no wonder, no wonder people like grannies go to like play bingo. Yes. Right? You're right. B bunko, bingo, oh my, you're bridge. Right. You're right. Bingo. They, they were doing this years ago. They probably didn't even realize it, but they were trying to find community and like-minded people who were going through the same thing. I things. mean, look at my dad. He goes to the senior center and play cards with his buddies every day. Yeah. He has to get out of the house on a... On a walker, mind you, three city blocks, people. Yeah. On a walker, my dad gets up and does it every day. He has to move and get out of the house. 
brings him joy, a little bit of joy, being with his friends there. Yeah, they I mean, I, I think I just kind of lost. I used to have hobbies even when my kids were young. I used to paint like crafts. I used to paint like it was called toll painting. I did that and I used to do scrapbooking, you know, so maybe I, I got to get back into I got to I, I need a hobby. You're just super busy. You're, I know. You're, you're 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 like all in in work, clients and this and that. I know, but I feel like Plus I you got these little doggies with you I all know. the time. They're the best. They're actually being very good right now. Yeah, they're I'm proud of them right now. But um, I do feel like maybe I need a hobby. I don't know if I have time for one, but I think eventually I'll need a hobby. Another thing that a lot of people do now is like pickleball, things like that. Oh, pickleball is good, active. Yeah, you're not moving. Active uh, thing to do. But I played bocce ball when you I was know, on vacation. Bocce ball? Yeah, the oh. talents play it. Oh, yeah, it's almost oh, yeah, like a yeah. tiny little ball, and you. I roll know it. what it is. You, it's kind of heavy. Yes, and you kind of roll it, and you want it to stop right at a yes. certain spot. You have to hit it to stop at a certain spot. Oh, you got to hit other balls. Yes. Yeah. I played that on vacation. Yeah, I don't know. Like, what would I be interested? In? What would you? I was good at ping pong. I was a beast at it. I missed that. Like one day, I want to get back into that. We got into for a short period of time chess. Chess. I know. We need to do that. We need to maybe the do that. Thinking. Thinking man, woman's game right there. Yeah. Burns a lot of calories, they say. I'd like, I, I'd like to know powerful. how many calories chess burns. It, for, that's what I heard. Those chess people, and they're, and they're very thin, a lot of them that play chess, and they're older. That's why they go. That's another thing that they do. A lot of older dudes that are good, they go to these parks and they play chess all day. Yeah, you see it, actually. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know in San Jose, but like in San Francisco, and New York, places like that. I don't know. Maybe they do it here, too. I just don't know about it. I'll get smoked in chess. I'm not that good. Another thing I like to do that I've gotten back to, back into a little bit recently is read. Yes. Like l setting some time up aside to just like read. Honestly, it's the best at night. Better than TV. I love to read. Honestly, t TV sometimes is a little mindless. Reading will just, not only is it good, it puts you to sleep. In, a, in such night. a beautiful way. That's a hack for you guys. If you have a hard time at nighttime sleeping, yeah. either have a Kindle or have an iPad like hers mm -hmm. or have a book with a reading light. And let me tell you, it works wonders. It'll put you out. Yeah, so what I talked about at the top of this show, like that that nighttime ritual, like, it, you know, hot a hot shower or a nice bubble bath and, and read. Eucalyptus, have a candle on, nice clean bed, you know, and everything shower and read into slumber. Do that at least once a week and you'll you'll... You'll sleep deep. You'll get your spark back for sure. At least you'll get your energy back for that night. You'll feel so good. You'll be giddy like a little kid on Christmas morning. Yeah. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one. See you.